Hello, my name is Dr. Ominde, and uh, we continue with our lecture series on the peritoneal structures. So we've finished discussing the kidney, now we go to the adrenal gland. The adrenal gland are usually on the superior pole and within the fascia, the renal fascia and the adipose around the kidney. Usually um, contact the liver on the right side and on the left side, they will contact the stomach, the pancreas and the spleen around that region. So um, the adrenal gland has a cortex and a medulla. The cortex comes from mesoderm and it produces corticosteroids, okay, and androgens. Uh, uh, corticosteroids such as uh, mineralocorticoid and glucocorticoids also produces androgens and this help in sodium and water balance. So um, the mineralocorticoid helps with sodium uh, reabsorption. It's the aldosterone helps with sodium reabsorption at the distal convoluted tubules of the kidney. So this sodium water balance will help with control of blood pressure. The glucocorticoids, which is also a corticosteroid, help with stress regulation. And of course, you know, the androgens are responsible for secondary sexual characteristics in the body. The medulla contains chromaffin cells. Chromaffin cells are neurocrest in origin, and they produce catecholamine, which is a neurotransmitter or a hormone that is responsible for sympathetic um, 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 control in the body. So uh, these are the adrenal glands. You can appreciate this is the cortex and the cortex is usually divided histologically into actually three parts. The zona glomerulosa, zona fasciculata and zona reticularis. Then from the cortex you can see the different regions of the cortex. Yeah, Zona glomerulosa, fasciculata and reticularis. Then you get to the medulla with the chromaffin cells and the neurovascular structures. So the blood supply of the adrenal gland is mainly by superior, suprarenal arteries. So there's a supra, superior suprarenal artery from inferior phrenic artery, which is from abdominal aorta. Middle suprarenal artery is directly from the abdominal aorta. And inferior suprarenal artery comes from the renal artery, which is from the abdominal aorta. The adrenal gland is drained by the lumbar lymph nodes. So you can appreciate the superior suprarenal arteries are from inferior phrenic, which is coming from abdominal aorta. The middle suprarenal are directly from the abdominal aorta, while inferior suprarenal is from renal artery that is coming from the abdominal aorta. Again, you can appreciate the um, middle suprarenal, superior suprarenal, and inferior suprarenal. So the infrarenal veins, veins, and inf inferior phrenic vein. Again, suprarenal, you can see the artery directly from the aorta and inferiorly from the renal artery. We are mesenteric. These are the left and right renal. Okay. This is your celiac. Okay. What's the innovation of suprarenal gland? So you have, of course, um, a sympathetic stimulation. So through celiac plexus and abdominal pelvic splanchnic nerves. These are greater, lesser, and least splanchnic nerves. So myelinated, the sympathetic fibers, you have presynaptic and postsynaptic, okay? So presynaptic, they come from the lateral horn, lateral horn of the spinal cord from T10 to L1. Lateral horn of the spinal cord from T10 to L1, presynaptic fibers will originate. Presynaptic fibers will originate from the lateral horn of the spinal cord at T10 to L1, then they enter the paravertebral and prevertebral ganglia. They don't synapse in the ganglia. Then from there, they go straight to the chromaffin cells of the adrenal medulla to cause them to produce catecholamine. So T10 to T11, lateral horns of the spinal cord, presynaptic fibers move to the para and prevertebral ganglia without synapsing into chromaffin cells of the medulla to make them to produce adrenal or catecholamines. Uh, so, what is renal calculi? Calculi are stones. So you can have stones in the kidney or stones in the ureter. It could be because of infection or because of dehydration. So the minerals or the yes in the uh, ions in the urine will now form stones, and stones can lead to obstruction. So how will you know that the uh, patient has renal or ureteric calculi before you do imaging? The patient will complain of pain. And this pain is what you call ureteric colic. Ureteric colic is characterized by peristaltic wave of contraction. It comes and goes, it's intermittent. So peristaltic, remember there's peristalsis of the ureter. And this pain 
Since the ureter is moving from the kidney downwards to the bladder, the patient will say they're having pain in the lumbar region, in the inguinal region, in the external genitalia, or the testes. Why? Because these regions, this, uh, the skin over this region, the cutaneous supply is T11 to L2. And this same T11 to L2 that is getting um, nerves from T11 to L2 parts of the spinal cord. So T11 to L2 from uh, part of the spinal cord will give nerves to the ureter and they will also give nerves to the skin around the lumbar, inguinal region, external genitalia of the testes. So patient who has ureteric um, colic, they'll complain of skin over these dermatomal regions. So, and they will tell you that this pain is coming from the lumbar region or the loin, and it's, it goes downwards towards the groin or the inguinal region. That's how you know it's ureteric colic, because the ureter passes from the kidney in the lumbar region going downwards. And the pain, extends to anterior aspect of the thigh because the genitofemoral nerve has that L1, L2 nerves. It spreads to the scrotum and to the labia majora. So because of these lumbar branches that supply these areas. So this pain is usually very extreme and may be accompanied by gastrointestinal symptoms such as nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Then we discuss the pancreas. This has been covered before in the um, supracolic compartment lecture. So we'll just go briefly over it. It's because it's a retroperitoneal gland. So this is the pancreas. There's a head, neck, body, and the tail. This is the ancinate process. And this diagram just shows you the relations of the pancreas. So it contains both exocrine, that it will be drained by the duct, and also endocrine containing islets of langer hands that secrete their secretions, insulin and uh, glucagon into the blood vessels. Then it's secondarily retroperitoneal. So it was initially in the peritoneum, then because of embryogenesis, it went posterior to the peritoneum. So it is it's above the duodenum, this is the duodenum, then extends towards the spleen. Anterior to the pancreas, these are the relations. This was already covered. So you have lesser sac, pylorus, mesenteric arteries, and vein, transverse mesocolon, the stomach. Superior to the, um, if you can, if you can see here, superiorly, there is a splenic artery here. And then on the right, you have second part of the duodenum and the ampulla of vata around this portion. Then on the left, the spleen, there's the hilum of the spleen at this region here. You can appreciate the hilum of the spleen close to the tail of the pancreas. Then posterior to the pancreas, you have the left cruise of the diaphragm. You have the psoas muscle, renal vein on the right, inferior vena cava, bile ducts the spleen, the left renal vessels, the kidneys and suprarenal glands on the left, uh, celiac plexus, inferior mesenteric veins, splenic vein, you can see splenic vein here, it is posterior to the pancreas, and splenic vein will be joined by superior mesenteric vein to form portal vein at the neck of the pancreas, okay? Then there's the aorta behind the, the, the pancreas, there's inferior vena cava, there's common bile duct around here. So these are the structures posterior to the pancreas. So you can appreciate here, that the superior mesenteric so, so there's a superior mesenteric artery here, lump of spleen, the inferior vena cava and the aorta are posterior to the pancreas, the vein behind the neck of the pancreas, the superior mesenteric and the splenic vein joined to form the portal vein here. You can appreciate the common bile duct is posterior to the pancreas. So um, again, this just shows you what we have discussed, splenic artery here. You can appreciate the aorta, the portal vein and bile duct are posterior to the pancreas. Superior mesenteric vessels pass posterior to the pancreas, but the body of pancreas, but anterior to the ancinate process of the pancreas. The blood supply of the pancreas, the superior part towards the tail is supplied by splenic artery. Then the head is supplied by superior pancreatic or duodenal arteries from the gastroduodenal and inferior pancreatic or duodenal from the superior mesenteric artery. The aorta gives celiac trunk. Celiac trunk gives left gastric to the stomach and esophagus, splenic towards the spleen. This splenic supplies superior part to the tail of the pancreas. Then you have the common hepatic. So common hepatic usually gives um, gastroduodenal artery before it continues as hepatic artery proper. So this gastroduodenal is the one that 
is giving superior pancreatic duodenals to the head of the pancreas superiorly above the ampulla of vata, and the inferior pancreatic duodenals are coming from superior mesenteric artery, also from the abdominal aorta. The venous drainage of the spleen, the splenic vein will drain the body and the tail, and the inferior pancreatic duodenal veins and superior pancreatic duodenal veins will drain into superior mesenteric veins, splenic and superior mesenteric, splenic and superior mesenteric posterior to the root of the pancreas, posterior to the neck of the pancreas, joined to form portal vein. Some bit of the pancreas is drained by inferior mesenteric vein. You can see inferior mesenteric vein will come. It's draining the right side of the colon, the left side. So the descending colon and sigmoid colon will be drained by inferior mesenteric vein that will join splenic vein before splenic vein joins superior mesenteric vein to form the portal vein. Lymphatic drainage of the pancreas, pancreatic duodenal nodes drain the head and neck, the body and the tail will be drained by pancreatic splenic nodes, okay, and some lymphatics will go to the celiac nodes around the origin of celiac trunk and superior mesenteric nodes around the origin of superior mesenteric artery. So celiac nodes, superior mesenteric nodes, splenic nodes, pancreatic duodenal nodes. And remember the stomach lies here, so the pyloric nodes and the left gastric nodes can drain some bit of the spleen. So you just need to remember that in pancreatic cancer, the cancer can spread to the lungs, to the liver, through the peritoneum, okay, or through blood. So you can have spread through blood or spread through lymphatics to different organs. Patients with um, pancreatic cancer will present with fatigue, and then they'll present with symptoms of diabetes because the islet of Langerhans, the beta cells produce insulin that help in the regulation of blood sugar. So they may have features of diabetes. They can present with yellowing of the eyes because the common bile duct that's carrying bile is posterior to the pancreas. So if pancreas is enlarged, it compresses or prevents the drainage of bile. Then they can present with weight loss because the pancreas has a role in um, the pancreatic juices help to digest the food and help with absorption of food. The stool color will change because bile has been obstructed. Then they will have an itchy skin because of bile obstruction. Remember, the common bile duct is posterior to the... Um, let me go back. This is the common bile duct. So if you have cancer here, you compress drainage of uh, bile. That is why the patient is presenting with yellowness of the eyes, itchiness of the body because of bile duct obstruction. The patient will have severe back pain. Why? Pancreas is a retroperitoneal organ. If you have cancer of the pancreas, um, the lumbar vertebra will be involved. So we can give you a clinical story and ask you to state the anatomical basis. A patient presents with fatigue, loss of appetite, unintended weight loss, um, dark colored stool, itchy skin, um, abdominal pain that radiating to the back, yellow eyes, yellowing of the skin. Explain the anatomical basis of these symptoms. The pancreas is anterior to the common bile duct. If, if you have cancer of the pancreas, you obstruct common bile duct, you obstruct bile flow. Accumulation of bilirubin leads to yellowing of skin, yellowing of mucosal membrane, itchiness of the skin, dark stool, uh, dark urine, light colored um, stool. Now, fatigue because of symptoms of diabetes, pancreas has a regulation in uh, blood sugar by producing insulin. Unintended weight loss, because of um, pancreatic juices help with digestion so that you absorb food properly. Loss of appetite again because of the GI rule. Abdominal pain that is radiating to the back because the pancreas is a retroperitoneal organ, so it will radiate to the vertebra at the back. This cancer can spread via blood to the lungs and the liver. It can spread via lymphatics to the liver. It can spread through because uh, to the peritoneal um, cavity anteriorly because it's a retroperitoneal um, organ it will spread to the peritoneum and its structures anteriorly so next lecture we discuss retroperitoneal vessels